Welcome to this essential guide for mastering gross anatomy and embryology, two foundational subjects for your USMLE Step 1 exam. These disciplines are not merely about memorizing facts, they are about understanding the intricate blueprint of the human body and its development. A strong grasp of these areas is critical for success in medical school and clinical practice. This video aims to provide you with a solid conceptual framework, highlighting the most high-yield topics and approaches for Step 1. We will navigate through the complexities of human structure and development, emphasizing the connections that make these subjects clinically relevant. Our goal is to equip you with the tools to approach these topics strategically, moving beyond rote memorization to true comprehension. Our primary focus will be on understanding the big picture and the key concepts that frequently appear on the Step 1 exam. We will explore how anatomical structures relate to their functions and how developmental processes can lead to clinical conditions. By the end of this session, you will have a clearer roadmap for your study of gross anatomy and embryology. Gross anatomy is the study of the human body's structures that are visible to the naked eye or can be palpated. This includes bones, muscles, organs, vessels, and nerves, all organized into complex systems and regions. For step one, understanding these structures is paramount as they form the basis for diagnosing and treating disease. The step one exam frequently tests your ability to identify structures and understand their functional relationships. It moves beyond simple identification, requiring you to apply anatomical knowledge to clinical scenarios. Therefore, a comprehensive approach that integrates structure, function, and clinical context is essential. Gross anatomy for step one is typically approached through two main organizational frameworks, regional anatomy and systemic anatomy. Both perspectives are crucial for a complete understanding and are often integrated in exam questions. Regional anatomy organizes the body into distinct areas such as the head and neck, thorax, abdomen, pelvis, back, and upper and lower limbs. This approach emphasizes the spatial relationships between structures within a specific region. Understanding these relationships is vital for clinical procedures and interpreting imaging. Within each region, you must be able to identify the major structures, including bones, muscles, nerves, arteries, and veins. For example, in the neck, knowing the carotid sheath contents and their relative positions is critical. This detailed identification forms the bedrock of clinical examination and surgical approaches. Beyond identification, understanding the intricate relationships between structures is key. How does a nerve pass through a muscle? What vessels supply a particular organ within a region? These interconnections are frequently tested, often in the context of injury or pathology. Systemic anatomy focuses on the major organ systems, tracing their components throughout the body. This perspective allows for a deeper understanding of physiological function and how different parts of a system work together. For example, the cardiovascular system includes the heart, arteries, veins, and capillaries, all working in concert. Examples of major organ systems frequently tested on step one include the cardiovascular, respiratory, digestive, nervous, and musculoskeletal systems. Each system has unique anatomical features and functional roles that are essential to master. The cardiovascular system involves the heart's chambers, valves, and conduction system, along with the major arteries and veins. The respiratory system encompasses the airways, lungs, and pleura. The digestive system covers the alimentary canal and accessory organs. The nervous system includes the brain, spinal cord, and peripheral nerves. Finally, the musculoskeletal system comprises bones, muscles, and joints, providing support and movement. A fundamental aspect of gross anatomy for step one is its clinical relevance. You must move beyond simply naming structures to understanding their function and how anatomical variations or pathologies manifest clinically. This integration is what makes anatomy truly applicable to medicine. Understanding the structure-function relationship is paramount. For instance, the unique arrangement of muscle fibers in the heart dictates its pumping action. 
Similarly, the branching pattern of the bronchial tree is directly related to gas exchange efficiency. Relating anatomy to common clinical scenarios is a high-yield strategy. Consider how nerve impingement affects motor or sensory function, or how vascular occlusion impacts organ viability. These connections transform anatomical knowledge into diagnostic reasoning. A classic example is understanding the blood supply to the heart, particularly the coronary arteries, in the context of myocardial infarction. Knowing which artery supplies which region of the myocardium allows you to predict the clinical presentation and potential complications of an occlusion. This level of integrated understanding is what step one demands. Embryology is the study of human development from the moment of fertilization through the formation of a fully developed human. This intricate process involves a series of precisely timed events and understanding these stages is crucial for comprehending congenital anomalies and genetic disorders. For step one, embryology often presents as challenging but highly testable material. The exam frequently probes your knowledge of developmental milestones, the origins of various tissues and organs, and the mechanisms underlying common birth defects. A conceptual understanding of these processes, rather than just memorization, will serve you best. Embryology for step one focuses on several critical stages of development and their clinical implications. Mastering these key areas will provide a strong foundation for tackling exam questions. Gastrulation is a pivotal event in early embryonic development, occurring around the third week. During this process, the bilaminar embryonic disc transforms into a trilaminar disc, establishing the three primary germ layers. These layers are the ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. Understanding the formation of these three germ layers is fundamental. The epiblast cells migrate through the primitive streak to form the mesoderm and endoderm, while the remaining epiblast forms the ectoderm. This cellular rearrangement sets the stage for all subsequent organ development. Crucially, you must know the derivatives of each germ layer. The ectoderm gives rise to the nervous system and epidermis, the mesoderm forms muscle, bone, connective tissue, and the cardiovascular and urogenital systems. The endoderm develops into the lining of the gastrointestinal and respiratory tracts and associated glands. Neurulation is the process by which the neural plate folds to form the neural tube, which subsequently develops into the brain and spinal cord. This critical event begins during the fourth week of development and is highly susceptible to disruption. The development of the neural tube involves the induction of the ectoderm by the underlying notochord, leading to the formation of the neural plate. The plate then folds and its edges fuse to create the neural tube. Defects in this fusion process lead to neural tube defects. The neural tube differentiates into the central nervous system, including the brain and spinal cord. The cranial end expands to form the brain vesicles, while the caudal portion forms the spinal cord. Understanding this progression is key to comprehending neurological development. Organogenesis is the period during which all major organ systems begin to develop from the three germ layers. This phase is particularly sensitive to teratogens, as the rapid differentiation and growth make the embryo vulnerable to developmental defects. The development of major organ systems involves complex interactions between different germ layers and signaling pathways. For example, the heart begins to form from mesoderm, while the lungs develop from an outgrowth of the foregut endoderm, interacting with surrounding mesoderm. Critical steps in organ formation include the folding of the embryo, the formation of various septa, and the rotation of organs. Understanding these sequential events helps explain the anatomical relationships of adult organs and the origins of congenital anomalies. Potential developmental defects are a major focus for step one, knowing the specific stage at which an anomaly occurs and which germ layer or developmental process is affected is crucial. For instance, understanding the septation of the heart 
helps explain various congenital heart diseases. Embryology is heavily tested on step one, primarily through its clinical correlations. The exam often presents scenarios involving congenital anomalies and asks you to identify the underlying developmental error. This requires a deep understanding of normal embryological processes. Understanding congenital anomalies involves recognizing their anatomical presentation and tracing them back to a specific developmental stage or germ layer defect. For example, a cleft lip or palate results from incomplete fusion of facial prominences. Identifying the underlying developmental causes of anomalies is a high yield skill. This includes knowing the genetic or environmental factors that can disrupt normal embryogenesis. For instance, maternal rubella infection can lead to congenital heart defects and cataracts. We have now completed our overview of gross anatomy and embryology, highlighting their critical importance for the USMLE Step 1 exam. We've covered the fundamental definitions, key areas of study, and the essential clinical relevance of both subjects. Remember, these are not isolated topics, but interconnected disciplines that explain the human body's structure, function, and development. The key takeaway from this session is the importance of understanding relationships, functions, and clinical significance. Do not simply memorize structures or developmental stages. Instead, strive to comprehend how everything fits together, how structures enable function, and how developmental errors lead to pathology. This integrated approach will serve you well on step one and throughout your medical career. In future content, we will delve into more detailed videos focusing on specific systems within gross anatomy and particular stages or anomalies in embryology. We will also incorporate practice questions to help solidify your understanding and prepare you for the exam format. Stay tuned for these in-depth explorations. Now we want to hear from you. What are your biggest challenges when studying gross anatomy and embryology for step one? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Also, please suggest topics for future videos that you would find most helpful for your step one preparation. If you found this video valuable, please like it to help us reach more students. Don't forget to comment with your insights and questions. Finally, subscribe to the channel for more high yield step one study content and hit the notification bell so you don't miss our next release.